Hi. Today I'm going to talk about qualitative data analysis and specifically coding. Moving from the data collection to data analysis stage is an important turning point in the research process, but it can also feel a bit overwhelming. You have spent a fair amount of time collecting a bunch of data, but now you're asking yourself, what does it all mean? Developing a coherent strategy for organizing and analyzing your data is important, and coding is one tool that can help you do that. But first, what does coding mean? Coding is a process of creating and assigning codes to specific segments of data. What I mean by a data segment is a small portion of your data that has meaning. For example, this could be a phrase or several sentences from a transcribed interview. But what is a code? It is often a word or short phrase you use to summarize, capture the essence of, or give meaning to your data. Often a single code is assigned to multiple data segments across different data sources. This is part of how coding helps you identify patterns. There are many different ways to use codes, but let me give a sim simple example. Let's say you are analyzing transcripts of interviews you have conducted and notice that an idea is coming up across several interviews. You can create a code and assign it to the portions of the different interviews that relate to that one idea. Later, you can retrieve all of the bits of text that you assign to that code to compare how the idea is addressed across the interviews. In fact, these are the two basic functions of any qualitative data analysis software, coding the data by assigning codes to various data segments, and later retrieving those data segments. The main advantage of using software rather than coding by hand is that retrieval is made much simpler than sifting through pages and pages of text. While most software packages have some more advanced features, it should be kept in mind that these two basic functions, coding and retrieval, are really at the foundation of what qualitative analysis software offers. While coding is most often performed on written text, the same principles can be applied to other types of data, such as audio or video recordings or images, depending on the software's capabilities, but more importantly, depending on your research question and what types of data you actually need to analyze. Now, how does coding relate to different qualitative analysis methods you may want to employ? It is true that some researchers use the term coding to actually encompass all kinds of qualitative data, data analysis. However, I prefer to say that coding is a procedure or tool that can be employed as one step within a broader analytical approach. For example, narrative analysis, discourse analysis, frame analysis, and thematic analysis are comprehensive analytical methods, each of which may include coding as just one crucial step. How might coding work in your research project? Well, how you code depends on the nature of your research question, the types of data you have, and the qualitative analysis methods you are employing. One main distinction to think about is whether you adapt an inductive or deductive approach Specific analytical methods and epistemological stances may imply one or the other orientation, and this is reflected in the way you go about coding. For example, if you adopt a deductive or theory-driven approach, coding might mean devising a list of codes that reflect the concepts and phenomena, phenomena you know you are looking for in, in advance, and then going through the data to see where those codes can be applied, while ignoring everything else that does not fit into those predetermined boxes. At the other extreme, within an inductive or data-driven approach, such as that often taken in grounded theory work, coding would imply reading through the data with no predetermined codes and as few a priori as possible, and only creating codes as and when you identify new patterns in the text. A combined deductive, inductive, or back and forth between the two approaches is probably most common. This could mean creating a small set of predetermined codes that remind you what you are looking for, combined with an openness to reinterpreting what those codes mean, as well as creating new codes in response to relevant but unexpected patterns you may encounter as you analyze your data. Finding the right balance here is one part of developing your analytical strategy. One final but important point relates to making choices and recognizing limits. 
Coding, and probably any kind of data analysis, necessarily implies a process of simplifying or reducing your collected data. Of course, you are not going to cut and paste the full text of your data into the results section of your report and call it done. Instead, through analysis and presenting your results, particular aspects of themes in your data are identified, highlighted, and brought into conversation with theoretical debates. At the same time, you may have to decide what other possibly interesting patterns you have found in the data simply cannot be treated due to the limited scope of your research. What portions of your data are actually relevant to your research and what is not really so relevant? What should be included and what can safely be excluded? What arguments can be supported by the data you have? And where is your data just too thin to draw any conclusions? It is important to be reflexive and transparent about the limits of the data you have collected, the choices you have made in adopting a particular analytical approach, and why you focus on certain aspects of your data and not others. Although your research question may evolve as you gain new insights from your data, the research question remains an important guide in making and justifying these choices. <laughs>